It was absolutely <laughs> wild. Hello, my name is Frankie and in today's video I'm going to be chatting you through my positive birth story. So before we start, I'm just going to let you know that I was using hypnobirthing techniques during my pregnancy. I'll go into a little bit more detail about that when I get to that part of the story, but I was using the Positive Birth Company's sort of e-pack. I bought that after I had read Siobhan Miller's, um, I can't even remember the name of the book basically Siobhan Miller's hypnobirthing book and she also owns the Positive Birth Company. So I kind of wanted all of the information to be exactly the same so I decided to go with her book and her e-pack and watched all the videos and just took bits from it. Didn't do like everything but that's what I did. So I just wanted to kick off and tell you that. So now we'll chat about the day that I went into labour and it was a Sunday. I can remember my partner and I were cleaning the house. So I was putting the stuff away in the cupboards and I had to keep stopping because I had this kind of like really intense tightening across my bump and I kind of was like, oh, you know, that's really uncomfortable. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Um, and then it would go. So I think those were probably contractions, surges. I'm probably going to call them both. Um, but I think that was probably, I would say they were more intense than Braxton Hicks because I used to get Braxton Hicks whenever I walked anywhere, especially up a hill. Absolute killer. So I would say that those few, I had probably like two or three surges in the day that day whilst cleaning the house. And then we went about our normal day. We went for a walk, um, just chilling, had dinner. So yeah, that night I was texting my mom. She was like, how's everything going today? Cause I was giving her like little daily updates and um, I was like, you know, had this, had that, um, the twinges, sporadic contractions, feel a bit different, not sure what's going on. And mom was like, okay, get some rest, go to bed, like try and get some sleep, see what happens through the night. And I was like, great idea. So I think it was about 9 p.m. Um, I got into bed about 9.30, probably 9.30, um, I got into bed with my boyfriend and we were just lying there, I think we were just chatting and I had a surge. Um, the first one that I'd ever had sort of laying down in bed and definitely the first one that had kind of felt this particular way. Um, so I was like, okay, I've got this. Did my breathing techniques through it, in for, what was it, in for four, out for six, can't even remember. Was doing that felt absolutely fine. If you see me looking down here, I'm watching my daughter on the monitor. Um, I'm not looking at the floor for any other reason. The fact that if she wakes up, I'm going to have to leave. So yeah, I was doing my breathing techniques in for four, out for six. And then probably about six or seven minutes later, I had another one. And at the time I was like, mm, okay, this is quite intense actually. I'm going to get up. So I said to my boyfriend, stay in bed and I'll get up and go and bounce on my ball, go and watch some TV, you know, have a chill time downstairs. It was very chilled and very calm. And he was like, cool, you sound like you're in control. <laughs> go downstairs, I'll have a snooze. So I did just that. I went downstairs and I got on my birth ball, bouncing away at first I was like sort of just sitting on the ball having the surges and they were kind of I mean they were so different and this is I'll come to this part of the story later but this is where I messed up and I don't think I messed up maybe I didn't mess up but I had some surges that were kind of eight to 12 minutes apart and then I had others that were three to four minutes apart, all kind of the same intensity. So that kind of threw me off a little bit because I was like, oh, you know, this isn't unmanageable. I was texting my mum at the time. So I think now it's probably about half 10, 11. So I'd probably been downstairs for about an hour, an hour and a half. And I was texting my mum. She was like, um, how intense is it? Like, what can you do? And I was sort of saying to her, I can walk around through the surges. Um, I can't sit down 
whilst having them I still feel really in control it's manageable like it's not unmanageable and then about half an hour later uh, we were kind of like messaging again she was like how are you doing now how how close together are they and I was like I've just started timing them because they are getting a little bit closer and I want to see if there's a pattern forming for when we call them midwives so I started for um recording them and they were I think at this point six or five minutes apart which again isn't that close together. I don't know if you're watching this and you're not in the UK, then in the UK, they recommend when you call the midwives is when you've got a 10 minute period. Uh, so it's like three surges in 10 minutes that last 45 to 60 seconds. So I was kind of doing two surges that lasted 45 to 60 seconds. I just had to run and get my daughter up because she had woken up. She's currently down here <laughs> lying on my lap. Um, so if you hear sneezes, sniffles, grunts, screams, there's not a little elf, it's her. Yes, I was saying that I'd started to time the surges and I was talking to my mum still, kind of saying, you know, they're feeling a bit more intense, definitely have to focus through them, have to um, do my breathing techniques, can't sort of speak through them. So it was ramping up a little bit, but not too much. It was still manageable and Phil was still asleep at this point. So I hadn't woken him up yet because I wanted him to have as much sleep as possible. And then think over the next 30 minutes, they were getting quite consistent, but they were still five minutes apart. And I still I mean they were definitely intense but I was managing through them and I didn't kind of think that I needed to call anyone yet or that she was coming soon do you know what I mean and then at 11 30 on the dot my waters broke downstairs in our living room it wasn't like one of those scenes that you see in the films where it gushes out when you're in a supermarket. It was nothing like that. It was literally a trickle down my leg. I know some women do get the gush, but I did not get the gush. I had a little trickle down my leg. I text my mum saying, oh my God, my water's just broke. Um, she was like, oh my God. And then <laughs> um, I luckily had a tea towel. So I stood over a tea towel for a while. Uh, probably not a while. I mean, probably a few minutes. And I text my mum and I was like, I feel like I should probably go and wake Phil up now. And she was like, yeah, probably a good idea. So I waddled upstairs and um, poor Phil gave Phil a little nudge. She was like, babes, waters have just broke. And he was like, oh my God. <laughs> so he sprung out of bed and went into full kind of like dad mode, like protector mode. Like, do you need this? Do you need that? What can I do for you? I'll pack the car. I'll do this. Um, so at this point, it's probably good to tell you that we had originally planned to have a home birth, a home water birth. We had the pool, we had it all ready to go. But unfortunately, Brighton Hospital did not have the staff to accommodate our home birth that night. So we were like, cool, we'll go into hospital. It was always part of the plan. And I was totally at peace with that. I wasn't too fussed either way. I just wanted to give it a try at home if I could. So I decided I was going to have a shower because I my waters had broke. They were a little bit, they weren't kind of, I just wanted to be clean. So I got in the shower and things really started to sort of go up a notch. And when I say go up a notch, at the time, I was just like, wow, this is really kicking off. But... Looking back on it, I think I transitioned in the shower from the up stage of labour to the down stage of labour. So if you don't know, if you haven't done hypnobirthing or any kind of birth knowledge, the up stage of labour... Oh! Oh! The up stage of labour is where all of your muscles, your uterus muscles come up. And then the down st stage is when they go down, pushing the baby down. That's when you want to sort of... You feel that involuntary pushing sensation because, like everything's like get it out um so that happened in the shower and I was just kind of thinking at the time this is really intense I had started being really vocal I was holding the sides of the shower um Phil was on the phone to the midwife's like 
things have definitely gone up a notch. Um, the midwives were listening to what I was kind of saying and how I was reacting and kind of managing each surge. So the hospital is um, a three minute drive away and they were saying, look, we don't have the staff or the resources here for you tonight. You're going to have to go to a further away hospital, which was a 30 minute drive, which is absolutely fine. Phil started packing the car and we were ready to go. Probably all of this happened probably around, it was probably like an hour that this was happening in. So Phil made a few phone calls and was like, they're getting really close together. Um, she's really struggling through the contractions now, um, sort of struggling to, I don't even know, like struggling is not the right word, but I was just... There was a massive change and we were both really aware of it. At the end of all of this, um, he'd been on the phone to the midwife. They were like, really sorry, you're going to have to go to the faraway hospital. I was like, fine. I don't know how I'm going to sit in the car for half an hour, but we'll do it. It's something you just got to do. And then I had another surge and I was upstairs and I just knew. I said to Phil, you, you've got to ring back the midwives. We're, we're not going to make it to that hospital. Like she's coming. Um, I know she's coming and we're not going to make it. So he called back and the midwife could hear me on the phone. I mean, I've never made this noise before and I don't think I'll ever make it again until I'm in childbirth again going through it. It was like from the depths of my soul and it was like, it was a bit like that, but it was a lot louder. Oh, it was a lot louder. It was very like grunty, loud, it was like a projection of energy coming out of my mouth. It was like, Rah! but it wasn't like that at all. I can't, I can't, I can't replicate the noise basically. So the midwife was like, oh yeah, maybe, maybe come here actually. That does sound like things are really kicking off. So we got in the car, we made the few minute journey to the hospital. It was the worst journey of my life. I realised at this point that I hadn't sat down since 9.30pm and there was a reason for it. I didn't sit down because I couldn't. It was so intense. Like I just had to stand up or, I mean, I stood for that whole time from 9.30 until we got to the hospital at like, I think we got to the hospital at like 2, um, just before 2am. So... It was wild. Um, so when I was in the car, I was sat, obviously. Well, I wasn't sat. I reclined the chair and kind of laid across it. I remember stopping at a traffic light and I was having a surge and the traffic light had actually gone green, but we were both focusing so much on my breathing that Phil didn't even realise. So we were just sat at a green light, um, which was fun. <laughs> just, just, you know, wasting time whilst in labour. Um, that's nice. You're dancing. So yeah, we got to the hospital hospital uh, we parked up and I was having surges every two minutes um and I can remember because it took us about 15 minutes I think probably 10-15 minutes to get into the labour ward and I mean on a good day on a day that you're not in labour it would probably take you four um if that so I had a surge two surges in the car two in the car park, one outside the hospital, like there was people outside the hospital, they must have thought, like, Jesus Christ, this baby's going to come out right now. Like, I thought that as the, at the same time. I think Phil did, to be honest. I think we were both like, oh, my God. We got up into the labour ward, um, maternity ward, and they were like, let's just give you an examination quickly to see how far along you are, how dilated your cervix is. And I was kind of like, I can't lie down on the bed. Uh, she was like, you're going to have to. And I was like, gosh. So we had another surge. Oh, had another surge. And then um, laid down on the bed. She had a little feel around and was like, wow, you're 10 centimetres dilated. And um, your baby's probably going to be born in the next 30 minutes. So let's get you upstairs onto the labour ward. Because I was in the maternity ward. So up to the labour ward. And let's deliver this baby me and Phil were like oh my god okay so I really wanted a water birth and luckily the only pool that they have at Brighton was available so they started filling it up when I was on my way in um I literally <laughs> walked into the room you just don't care what's going on around you I just saw this pool like the door was wide open I took all of my clothes off and got in this 
big massive bath basically oh my gosh like that is the best form of pain relief ever it was so soothing um and i just went into like full warrior mode and the midwife gave me some really great advice at this point she said all of that energy that's coming out of your mouth like i was mooing like a cow at this point um, she was like, take it internally and bear down with every surge. And like, you're going to meet your baby soon. She was saying all this really great stuff. And I was like, oh, I'll oh, love it. I, I mean, I wasn't saying that at the time. I was like panting, like, I can't do this. And she was like, you absolutely can. She was like a positive energy in my ear. Phil was sat on the bed. I was in the bath and I had like the edges of the bath like this. I can remember I was really kind of ripping the bath in my hands and then if you can imagine like a huge jacuzzi type bath so I had my hands at the front like that and I had my feet at the back and I was like <laughs> floating <laughs> like this with my knees kind of touching the um bottom of the bath and that's how I gave birth well no I kind of turned to to actually get her out um, but that's how I was laboring so yeah midwife says take all of that energy inside and really bear down so yeah I was in warrior mode and I absolutely went for it to the point that I like burst blood vessels in my face um she was a big girl she was 10 pounds eight weren't you she was a big girl and I delivered her in the bath after probably about I'd say well, she was born at 2.50 and I probably got in the bath at about 10 past two. So yeah, I was in the bath, 40, 45 minutes, having surges every kind of two minutes. I mean, even closer together than that, it felt, to be honest. And it was very powerful and very intense. And like, I, like when I was crowning, like her head was coming out. Phil was just kind of like, it's, she's here, Frankie. Like, you're so close. You've got to keep going. And at this point, I was just like so zapped of energy. I was still giving, oh my gosh, you're like a little crocodile. I was still giving it absolutely everything I had, but I was really close to exhaustion. It was just so powerful. Um, I did have some gas and air at um, once we got into hospital, um, I'm not sure that it did much at all, to be honest. So yeah, she was born at 2.50am on the 7th of February in the birth call. Um, the whole birth from start to finish was incredibly fast. Like I said, I went into labour at 9.30 and she was born at 2.50 the following morning. So it's like six hours max. Um it was wild, to be honest. It was absolutely wild. I just couldn't believe that, like, I had done that. And even for the days following, weeks following, months, now even, I'm like, I did that. Okay, so, things that I did in preparation for labour. So, I told you already that I did hypnobirthing. So, the things that I did mostly from hypnobirthing were... Practicing the breath, so that was up breathing and down breathing. So that's in for four, out for six, and then with down, that was up breathing. Down breathing is kind of um, taking in a lot of air and then pushing it kind of like down your body. Um, I didn't really get to use that one because it was all happening very quickly and I just completely followed my instinct. I didn't know how to not, like, I just did what I felt was right at that moment in time. Like, I think some people are like, how do you know when it's time to push? You just know. Like, and some people don't even push, they just let it let go. But like I my natural response to that sensation was to grit my teeth and push her out. Everyone's experience might be different. You might feel the same. Who knows? I did that breathing, which massively helped, especially at the beginning, that breathing technique is so calming and so good it's like a form of meditation and obviously the calmer that you are the easier that this will hopefully be i felt that it really helped me and really benefited my experience the next thing that i did when i found out that i was pregnant is i 
got some birth affirmation cards. They were positive birth ones and I put them all over my house. So I had them on the shower. I had them in the kitchen. I had them around the fireplace and I just looked at them every day. I didn't read them out loud. I just looked at them every day. I think that really helped. So some of them sort of said things like, um, my baby will come when my baby is ready or, um, my body was made to birth my baby. My body will make my baby the right size to birth. All of these things. And I do genuinely believe that that really helped. I am six foot tall and my partner is six foot two. Um, we're both pretty big people. I was a very big baby. He was a pretty big baby too. And I had like a lot of people telling me during my pregnancy that I was going to have a massive baby. Um, so that kind of worried me. Um, I mean, she was a big girl, but I, to I did it. I totally did it without pain relief, a little bit of gas and air. Like I did that and I'm so proud of that. So another thing that I did was when you buy the Positive Birth Company's e-pack that you watch, they have MP3s. So they have birth affirmations and like birth meditations, different things like that. I listened to those every day, not for the whole pregnancy, but definitely the last few weeks I was listening to affirmations every day, if not twice a day. Overall, I think I had a really positive birth experience and I think hypnobirthing played quite a big role in that. If I hadn't have done hypnobirthing, had those birth affirmations up, practiced the breathing, would it have gone as quickly or as smoothly as it did? Who knows? Yeah, overall, it was a great experience. Juno was born at 2.50 a.m. on the 7th of February. She was uh, 10 pounds eight. And yeah, I had a natural birth other than a little bit of gas and air at the beginning. I did have a second degree tear, so I did have to have stitches um, at the end, but that was absolutely fine. Don't worry about that. I think once you've given birth, you're like, bring it on. I can do anything. I was chatting to Phil about this the other day, actually. And um, we were watching this program where people were like jumping into um, icy water in lakes. And he was like, do you think you could do that? And I was like, to be fair, I've given birth. I can do anything. <laughs> and you do feel like that afterwards. You do genuinely feel like that. Like, and you can. And you can totally do it. So I hope you found this birth story um, good. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a really good time. Absolutely loved it from start to finish. Don't get me wrong. It is really intense, really powerful. It is uncomfortable and it does hurt but you can totally do it. You can. Like I've questioned my ability uh, before. Um, I think people can quite easily assume that I'm a little bit soft and a little bit sensitive and not very good with pain, but I absolutely smashed it. So, and I'm proud of myself and my partner's proud of me and we've got this gorgeous little sausage. So um, I hope you enjoy this video. I'm sorry if it's a little bit crazy. My brain is still very much all over the place. Um, Juno is now three months old and she is the light of our lives. We love her very, very much. And um, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments if you wanna chat about anything. I'm happy to go into more detail or um, yeah, just, slide into the comments and we can have a good old chat. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been lovely chatting to you and I'll see you hopefully a little bit more frequently if this one lets me film. Um, I'll try and put a video out every week, but we will see. Lots of love. Bye.